Next talk. Um, I'm Hendrik Ebbers. I'm from from Karakun. Um, and I will talk about the extreme GUI makeover. Um, so some words about me, but I think we are out of time, so we will do high speed now. So I'm Hendrik Ebbers. I'm from Dortmund in Germany. I'm um, yeah, co-founder of the company Kawakun. Uh, I do a lot of Java stuff. I'm a Java champion, Java rock star, um, part in some um, expert groups in the JSR for Java specification and so on. Uh, but today I want to talk about JavaFX and how to create cool UIs with JavaFX. Um, oh yeah, and about JavaFX I written, yeah, maybe one and a half books, so I've written the Java FX 8 book for, for Oracle for the release of, of Java 8. And for DZone, I did the Java FX 8 ref card. Um, OK, so this is what I want to talk about today. So let's say you have an old school application that is maybe pixelated, do not look that shiny. And um, in this session, we will talk about how you can yeah, make it better, how to define a better UI, a better design, a better usability for such an application. In general, from my point of view, there are two ways how you can do it, right? I wanted to display it here. So the one way is that you can do some general technical polishing, maybe do, do some styling to have some components that look a little bit better. But in general, it's more or less the same application, just yeah, some face lifting. Or you, yeah, do a completely new startup from the ground, create an intuitive new modern UI, use fancy components, and create something unique. So, um, to be true, I'm not so, so good in the thing on top because, uh, so Dirk said when I do it, it always ends here in the bottom. <laughs> so, um, so for the way on top, I um, yeah have Dirk with me <laughs> and uh, yeah, Dirk. I do, I do, I, I, <laughs> so I do the boring stuff while he's uh, pretending to be the yeah. genius here. Oh no, not really the genius. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, in the end, so I said we have two um, versions of the shame uh, of the shame of the same app prepared, and mm -hmm. Dirk will show you one version, and after that I will show you another version, and I think it's up to you what version oh. you like more. Oh, I have two more slides, I right? Didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see that coming. Oh, Sorry. we have a disclaimer. Mm -hmm. So everything that you see in this session is really done with Java. So there's no like hacks, other programming languages, things like that. We, you don't know to have tools like Photoshop or expensive tools mm. to do no, it. So no we, witchcraft. Which, yeah. witchcraft. Yeah. No so witchcraft. we read everything we show you, we did on our own while hacking at night mm -hmm. and having a beer. Exactly. OK, and so let's start with this crazy stuff. May I? And yeah, it's, Thank it's you. your turn. Thank you, Jim. Yes. First of all, the boring application. <laughs> the boring ex uh, application, exactly. So well, actually, the very first thing, and usually you mentioned this, is that when you look at this, we have a, a what? An application icon. We have an executable. And uh, maybe nowadays people take this for granted, but now with the Java Packager, we can actually build nice applications with the real operating system specific icon, and it really looks like it's a native application, right? It's seamless. Um, if you think of the old swing days, you know, you could always immediately tell that something was a Java application uh, because it had that uh, Java icon in the upper left. But nowadays with JavaFX, you really do have the tools at hand to come up with an application that looks like it's a normal application that. Oh no, that application looks awesome. This application looks awesome. Has yeah, some absolutely. great the content. The content is special, perfect. Special effects. Yeah, yeah. Now the right hand side looks perfect, like this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And the left hand side looks even worse this way. Okay, but let's start with the initial super ugly application. Let's move this around a little bit so we have room. Okay. So let's just assume that this is our initial application and it's boring and um, I actually had to implement this because uh, Hendrik doesn't even know how to come up with an uh, ugly application. Maybe we should show what type of application we have. 
We should tell them. You know. Yeah, you, yes. we should tell, not sure. It's, it's yeah. a sure. video database, like or a DVD database that somebody mm -hmm. might have written at home to, uh, to create a catalog of the DVDs you have, okay? So there we have this list of movies in our database, and you can click on one, and then you can you get some description of the movie, you click on show trailer, and then, hey, great, we have YouTube integration, and we can actually see the trailer, great? YouTube integration. YouTube I'm integration. I'm a AAA rated executive uh, protection agent. So, like this. This, actually, I really thought this was a funny movie. All right. Okay. Uh, I liked it. Okay. So, what can we do now to make this application look better? And the most basic thing that we can do is, is even called this way. It's called... It's the FX base constant in the uh, Modena CSS file. So uh, the basic colors of the Modena theme are all defined uh, based on uh, as, as derived colors of the FX base color. So if you now go in and you modify this color in your own style sheet, then a lot of the other colors will, will follow and the whole uh, appearance of your application will change and it will allow you to, to come up with a design like this one, for example, this is an animation tool that I once wrote. I unfortunately was not able to finish it because I didn't have the time. You have done this design? I, well, I copied this design from IntelliJ. You know, I'm not a magician, so yeah, <laughs> like you are. Thank you. Um, or or this, this design I did, but I also copied it from my IntelliJ. So it's a dark theme, it's the Darkula theme. I try to recreate this, and um, you do it by doing something like this. You define dot .container, a style class, and you override FX base and give it a new value, which is much darker than the default color, and then you end up with a dark theme. So let's go back here, let's enable this feature, and here I'm setting uh, like a dark blue color for FX base, and what you will notice now is that some of the panels are changing to this dark blue color, but at the same time, the, the text color is also changing to white because the way the Modena CSS file is set up, it, uh, it calculates whether there's enough uh, difference, contrast, between the text color and the background color. But this only takes us so and so far. This is not, not pretty yet. So let's add some more CSS details to it. So I've th I'm throwing in, I'm attaching in a new CSS style sheet, and now it looks like this. And I think this is already pretty good, right? But. Sure. Whenever you have an application and a project and you have a designer there, they will come and say, I, I hate the default fonts. So something you can do very easily with JavaFX, you can replace the fonts. And how do you do this? There's this um, declaration that you can add to your CSS file. You just say add font phase. Uh, source defines a path to the font file. And then you can assign the uh, font family name, for example, to, to a label or to all labels. Okay. And if you're, if you're in need of uh, free fonts, you can just go to the uh, fonts.google.com website and you get a nice preview there and you can download tons of fonts and I'm pretty sure you will find something that suits your needs. Okay, yeah? Henry, sounds like you want to say something? No, no, I'm fine. Okay, uh, so far I did not have to get that creative, okay? That was easy to do. So let's add some fonts. And they're not that much different than before, but they're a little bit bigger and a little bit bolder, so I'm using this now. Um, another thing that I would like to do to pimp up the application a little bit is to do some filtering. Let's do this very quickly. How do you do filtering in JavaFX? It's so easy. If you have a, a list of movies, then you can create a filtered list uh, by wrapping the original list. You can then create a sorted list by wrapping the filtered list, and then you pass the sorted list to the table view. Uh, then all that is left to do is you need to attach the, or you have to bind the predicate property of the filtered list to some predicate property of one of your controls, and the sorted comparator property you need to bind to the table view comparator property. So let's maybe do this. before you activate this one, okay. uh, one important point or interesting point um, is that until now. We only did CSS, right? Yeah. There's nothing different in the real Java source code. It's just CSS from this gray, ugly, uninteresting application where we started with to, like yeah, this? this one, to, to this one. This is really just CSS. Oh, there's one thing we can make it even better, the application. Hands off. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that was a, the wrong selection. Yeah, somebody here seems to be a big Star Wars fan. So let's turn on filtering. This now enables this nice little text field here. Of course, I filter for Star Wars. Okay? 
installers. Good. Thank you. All right. So this works very nicely. Okay. Let's select my favorite movie here. Okay, so we have seen that we can see, watch these trailers now on YouTube, but there is a media view in JavaFX, and uh, people, have, I don't know why, but nobody's really using that, okay? So I will enable this now, and now if I say show trailer, it will be shown directly inside. I'm a AAA rated executive protection agent. Hitman in the world. Yeah, okay. I'm spoiling this for you now. All right. Okay, so it's so easy to add like a, a, a movie preview or yeah, any, any video preview to your application. Okay, very simple. Um, let's do this again. I'm showing this. Because this is just a standard node in the scene graph, this also means that you can add other nodes and uh, overlay it with other nodes. So when you did something similar with Swing back in the days, then usually the video player was some heavyweight control, and you couldn't really put any other controls on top of it, except if they were also heavyweight controls. But these nodes, they're all the same, okay? So it's very easy to compose them to something more complex. And another thing I want to do now is, uh, currently that trailer, it just shows up, it pops up like this, so let's add some animation to it. And what I want to do is I want the media player to, uh, to uh, slide in from the top like this. All you need to do for that is you have to unmanage that node. You have to give it a negative layout coordinate like this, layout equals minus 400. And then you just change that one layout Y property over time. And that will give you an animation. Right? So media view set manage false, then some offset. And, and that's it. So let's stop this in the background, it's too noisy. So in the rehearsal you were singing at that moment? I was, I'm sorry, I will not do it today. Okay. Yeah. Not in the presence of genius. Okay, <laughs> so, and then once you have this uh, media view outside the visible area, uh, what you can do is you can create a timeline animation. Uh, you define a couple of keyframes where you modify the layout Y property and then hopefully the thing will slide in. Okay, so let's make it disappear. I enable the animation part. I say show trailer, and there it is again. Okay, this looks much nicer, right? It slides in, it slides out, and you will also notice that I'm not only um, animating the Y coordinate, but also the opacity. So while it's sliding in and sliding out, the opacity, opacity changes, and that makes it even work, makes it work even more seamless. But you, there's even more that you can do with the media view. You can also put it as a note in the background. That's test, test. You see me? Okay, that's sounded a different. So I'm adding it to the background. And can you see this now on the big screen? Yeah. yeah. So there's a very slow movie playing with these blurry elements just to spice up the background a little bit. Now, there's still a big issue here. We have this ugly table, and tables are for more for scientific scientific applications and databases, so we want a more free layout. And I'm replacing now the table view with a list view, just like that. I, I wish it would always be this simple, right? Just a switch. Yeah, much yeah. better. Much better, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it, it's not pretty yet, right? Because this is the default rendering that the, uh, the list view is doing. So what we need to do is we need to create a uh, custom list cell like this, movie cell, extends list cell, and the import object is a, is a movie, and we take over control of the appearance of the cell by saying set content display, content display dot graphic only. So the moment you do this, basically you control the whole appearance of that list cell. Okay, it's almost working like a swing uh, uh, renderer class. Okay, and then you apply the cell factory to the list view, and that's it. So let's do it. And now the list view looks like this. And the, uh, the cells, what they're showing are the portraits, the photos of the directors of those movies. Uh, but nowadays, you never see pictures displayed like this. And this is something uh, you did yesterday? In yes, in the training. Yeah, sure. So what are we doing for this? Clipping. 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 OK, clipping. so let's turn on clipping. Oh, this is just foolish. Uh, so now we have clipping. And this is like super easy to do. So Who's this? Is this? Oh, awesome guy. Awesome guy. Very attractive. So we have this Absolutely. pretty picture of Henrik, and all you need to do is you have to you can take any other node um, and set it as a clip on on the image view, and the result will be the intersection of these two objects. 
So in code, it will look like this. Let's, we are creating a circle with a radius of 30. Uh, we are centering it based on the, on the size of the circle, and then we are, setting, we are calling set clip on the director image. And the moment we do this, we get these nice round photos of the directors. OK, there's another ugliness back here. I have to move this around a little bit. There's still this big um, standard looking scroll bar. So let's make this a little bit slimmer. And the, the way to do this is, um, by default, the list view uses a virtual flow. And the virtual flow uses a control, a scroll bar, but a specialization of it, a virtual scroll bar. So the first thing we need to do is we have to get rid of this guy. And in the past, I always thought, OK, there must be some set visible property that I can call, right? But there isn't. So what you need to do is you need to style away this node, OK? So you use CSS. You say pref width, pref height. Yeah, that sounds like a terrible hack, I know. But, but it works. So it's not visible anymore. It's gone, OK? And then what you do is you create your own scroll bar. And you add the, the list view to stack pane. And you put the scroll bar on top of it. And now you can style it in any way you like. And you have full control of it. The step missing in here is that there are like five or six properties on a scroll bar. And you need to bind them all to the new scroll bar. And the moment you do this, you can control the list view very easy. OK, so now I'm enabling this scroll bar on. And now we have this nice scroll bar that looks like this. OK, good. One more thing, very simple, effects. JavaFX ships with tons of effects. When you look at this, the class hierarchy, or what is, a, what is a, an effect? Uh, let's say to the left, the Duke is the original image. Then you set a reflection effect on it and some shadow, or some shadow. And then you get these two variations of it. And uh, when you look at the class hierarchy, you will see that there are around 20 different effects that are already built into JavaFX. Closing this, enabling post effect, uh, enabling post effect. And now you see there's this little reflection below the poster. Right. Can you see it? Yeah, kind of. OK. Maybe uh, make a better poster than I think you. This is, no, this is very dark in the bottom. So yeah, here you see it, right? OK, much better. OK, one more thing that we can do is instead of just relying on the default controls that ship with JavaFX, we now start using ControlsFX. We are enabling this. And in ControlsFX, there's this nice uh, custom text field control that you can use. And it has a left and a right. So we can easily just put two different nodes uh, to the left and the right to, get it, to decorate it or to even give it functionality. So again, I'm searching for Star Wars. Of course. And now with this node, we can erase that uh, filter text. Okay, So now that is gone, and it looks much better. Okay. And the weighting control. And yes, the, the stars you see there below the text in the text box, that is the rating control that's included in controls FX. Okay, So you can click on it and give it even a 3.8 <laughs> rating. <laughs> That's too much, right? It should only, uh, and maybe that can be controlled too in some way. Okay, two more things I want to show, because, and we really have to rush, uh, I'm running out of time again. I want to be able to take this text here and drag and drop it. Drag and drop it. So if I enable drag and drop and I start dragging it, it will look like this, okay? It will give us the document icon. You can drop it on your desktop. And then there should be. Yeah, you dropped it on my image on the application, ah, ah, okay. so that was not working. Yeah. Okay. And then and then it's there. Just trust me. <laughs> but we want to make the drag and drop a little bit more attractive, and so I'm enabling this. How do I do this? Well, you can register a set on drag detected listener on the node, and then you have to perform a couple of steps. Uh, you have to initiate the start drag and drop. Um, this is common code that you always have to write to support drag and drop. But then at the end, you can call set drag view. And, in the, and for the drag view, the image that represents the drag, for this I'm calling snapshot on the node that's being dragged. And that will give you the, yeah, a copy of that node. And that will be shown instead of the default document icon. So I enable this. And now when I drag this, you can see the whole node being dragged. All right. But there's still a fundamental flaw uh, that uh, this design was not done by a person who's good with designs and graphics like Hendrik. So Hendrik would, do, would have probably re-implemented the whole thing in the first place, right? OK. Um, yes, yes, Dirk. <laughs> yes, Dirk. Yes, Mr. Gamma Man. 
Okay, so let's start the second application. So, so what we did afterwards, um, we decided that um, the application that Dirk shown still has some, some problems because, um, so at the beginning it was a basic table-based application and, and the, the general layout and, and how the components are ordered really looked like a form-based classical business application. And what we decided then is to, okay, start again from scratch and create a, I don't know, image view, image management application, how such application looks in our days. And um, so what we took as an example was things like the Apple TV, like the Google Chrome player, stuff like that, how the UI of those applications or yeah, things look today. And um, based on this, we created a second application. Um, so this is the basic view of the application. Um, in general, what I did is I created this layout by using um, the scene builder. Um, and everything you see here are really plain JavaFX applications, more or less the same that Dirk used, um, or that we use in the first application that Dirk showed. So, for example, when having a look here at the um, bottom of the application, we have here the um, movie selection. So instead of having this, this table or at the end this list that Dirk shows, it looked on my side yeah, like this. But to be true, this is no magic, this is a list view. So in JavaFX, the, the list view has an a parameter, a property, where you de can define the orientation of the list view, show if it, if it should be horizontal or vertical. And we just change the orientation of the list view and then wrote a custom cell renderer that yeah, simply renders the, the image poster of the movie as the cell. So this is really a plain, classic, oh, your mouse is much faster than mine. Um, a plain classic um, list view, so we have some bindings, so whenever I select something here, everything on the top will be updated. Um, so we're choosing a different layout, and the next step is more or less the same as we did with DX. Oh yeah, yeah I used um, Scene Builder to create the application, and one cool thing in Scene Builder is that in Scene Builder you can already work with CSS. So you can modify your CSS file and in Scene Builder see in real time how your application will look like. That's a big benefit of using Scene Builder. And um, yeah, so we developed the application first of all in Scene Builder and with CSS before we even wrote one line of Java code. And um, so the outcome of Scene Builder looks more or less like this. So we did some styling, we changed more or less the things that Dirk already showed. We changed the font, changed some colors. Here we have a darker background for, for our list view. We changed um, some things in the um, cell renderer so that the selection looks different than in the general JavaFX cell. Um, but this was more or less done completely with CSS. For sure we needed to write the um, the cell renderers for, for the list view, but everything else is FXML and CSS. Okay, um, so for the first application, we decided to, to have a kind of blurry animation in the background, to, to have a nice background. Um, here we wanted to try something else, so we don't, don't want to have this gray background. What we wanted to do is how they do it in, in such application show a picture of the movie or something like that in the background. Um, let me first of all activate it, which ended in yeah, a look like this. So we have an image in the background from the movie that is grayed out so that you can still read everything. Um, 
So th the idea was quite easy to do something like that, but it was really complex to, to do this because um, since we have here a desktop application, I can easily change the size of the application, right? It can have this size, it can have this size, it can have this size, and so on. Um, and based on this, we can have uh, an application view that has more or less a horizontal orientation or vertical orientation, like, like landscape or portrait mode, right? And, and if you have an image, it could be an image where the um, ratio of the sides is more like landscape, more like portrait mode, or it's, um, yeah. And um, what we needed to do is to um, calculate the position and the size of the image in the background to be flexible based on, on the, um, on the ratio or dimensions of our applications. Because, so if you have an, an image in landscape mode and your application um, is too high, it don't look good. Same if you have an image in portrait mode. You can easily um, do, uh, or you can easily bind the image view by using this fit width and fit height properties to your scene. But you can only bind one of those then you will end in something like this, or you bind both, and then the ratio of your application will be destroyed. So you will have like here this walkers where the, the legs are much too large. Um, so based on this, we created an application that gets in the width and height of the image and the width and height of the screen, and then calculates a dimension for the image, how the image should be um, yeah, layouted in our application to have the perfect view. Uh, yeah, this is also, there is more or less, it's one if else that checks, okay, are we in landscape or portrait mode? And then um, calculates the um, viewport and the size of the image. And, and by doing so, we always have um, an image that fills our whole background of the application, but, but never is scaled in a bad way or something like this. OK, um, the next thing I want to do, so in general, yes, I select the movie here in the bottom. But after it, this area in the top is the area that is important. So once I selected the movie, I don't care about this list here in the bottom. So um, what I wanted to do is to hide the list once you selected something or when you go out of the focus of the list. Um, to do so, I use the JavaFX animation API, like um, Dirk did for, the, um, for showing the, the movie player. Um, so what we did is we defined, like Dirk did it, um, a translation, or we set the translate um, of the list to a specific value, and then just entered, um, added mouse listeners to the list that will be fired once the mouse enters the list or once the mouse um, exits the list. And um, these events then will trigger the animation to, to play the animation or to stop. Um, so for the animation, I don't use this full-blown animation API with keyframes and so on because JavaFX provides some nice animation classes which are called transitions. Um, and JavaFX has several specific transition classes that extend the basic transition class that helps you to do a transition for rotation, for scaling, for translation, for changing a color, for fading something out by changing the opacity of a component and so on. And these are very easy because they are already, um, or the functionality of these transitions are perfectly match what you want to do. So for example, for the translate transition, you can just say, okay, I want to translate from this value to this value. And by doing so and starting the transition, the component will automatically be translated. So um, let's start this one. And oops. And here we see that, why is it that slow? Oh, that's, hmm. OK, normally it's not that slow. Um, but, but here you see, um, yeah, 
that it's fading, ah, come on, that it's fading in and out. Mo normally it's not that slow. I don't know why it's that slow, but, but anyway, I think this um, shows that it's important to use the animation API in this point and then do it on yourself because if you do not have enough CPU or things like that, the animation API will take care of it. And even if the frame rate is not, not perfect, um, the animation will be done in the defined um, um, period of time. So it, the animation won't take longer, for example, if um, you're running out of CPU or something like this. So you won't have any problems maybe without a small fra frame rate. But oh yeah, so now you see it's, it's getting much better. Um, so now I think, let me see. I think he, li yeah, he likes The Hobbit, right? And he <laughs> don't like Star Wars, is it like, yeah. I don't know why, okay. First of all, I thought it's something with, you know, Hotspot, um, that now it's compiled perfectly for DX machine and now it's fast, but it's still the problem with Star Wars, so actually I have no idea why. Um, so it's faded out, which is okay, but this don't look that good, right? You, now you see like half covers there somewhere in the bottom. You want to scroll there, and it just look weird. So um, what we did here, we just added an effect to, to the list, which is a shadow effect. And um, when we zoom, so the, the shadow effect is more or less always there. When we zoom or when the list um, goes to the bottom by the animation or fades out, it will go behind the shadow so that you don't see anything. And if you see the whole list, you can easily see it And because the shadow is just in the bottom. And it, in addition, oh, here should be, an, should be another slide because in addition, I animate the opacity of the shadow and bind this to the animation of the list. So when the list is there, you don't see the shadow. When the list fades out, the shadow f comes in or fades in. So let's activate this. I think that won't make the list faster. <laughs> but oh yeah, so this is okay, right? So now we see everything and now it really looks like the list is hidden. Let's try it with Star Wars. Oh, come on, really. <laughs> Okay, um, another thing I want to show is transformations. So, so we always work with transformations here by um, moving the, um, the list in and out, but in JavaFX you can do a lot of more transformations. To be true, you can do every affine transformation that you can do with an affine matrix. Actually, I can, I can tell you what you really can do with it, because I'm not a mathematics, so you have really like matrix transformations. But um, I found an article online that says that Doom was made 100% with affine transformations. So in theory, you can use JavaFX, put 100 JavaFX buttons in a scene, and using affine transformations, you can create a button-based Doom or something like this, okay? Um, so I just used a small transformation here that gives my poster a kind of 3D effect. So to be true, this is not a JavaFX 3D node or something like this. This is really still the 2D poster, but it is transformed by multiplying the, the points of the poster with, with a transformation matrix. And by doing so, the poster looks like, yeah, it would be 3D in the screen. Um, so, so now more or less everything of my application is styled. There's just one thing that is not styled that I do not like. And this is this yeah, native macOS application toolbar that is shown on the top. So because this, first of all, do not fit to my application. Next, on Windows, it looks a different way, and so on, and so on, and so on. So I do not want to have it. Um, but you can get rid of it, because in JavaFX, you do not need to have it to be true. You need, uh, it, it's um, by default, a stage have it. But there's an enum in JavaFX, I think it's stage style, 
or window style, um, and you can change each stage to have a different style. And one style is, for example, to not have any native um, bar in the top. And if you do that, you can just get rid of it and maybe create your own custom bar so that it, for example, looks like this. Um, to be true, when, when you do something like this, you even lose all the functionality that is part of the native bar. So this track and drop, right? I created this or I coded this in JavaFX on my own. Because normally you do it on the native bar, it's not JavaFX code. Since I do not have a native bar now, I really need to track it on my own. Yeah, and I just added a close button and a maximize button, so you can, JavaFX has um, a full screen mode, and the other one just closes the application. Um, so since we only have one minute left, I won't show this now. Um, I will show the last one. Um, so this one was created by um, defining the stage tile to something which is called like window. So you get a, a white rectangle from your operation system and can paint anything in it. Um, this is one thing that you and can do next to having a window with a native uh, bar on the top and so on. Another one that you can um, do is define the window to be undecorated. By creating an undecorated window, you really get a rectangle from, your, from the operation system that is not filled. So there's nothing in it. It's, think about an invisible rectangle somewhere in the operation system, like you, you track something like this, OK? And since this is not filled, you do not need to have um, an application frame that is a rectangle. You can do whatever you want. And um, so what I did, I um, choose to have a window which is um, undecorated, and then paint my whole um, custom application frame to be true. At the end, it looks more or less like this one. The difference is that it will create, uh, what I did is I create rounded borders. Here you see it, right? Let's go back. Boop, boop, boop. Here you see it, right? So in this case, I really have, a, or I, I'm starting with a window that really contains nothing, and I paint my application in it, and where I do not paint anything, yeah, it's just blank. So you can look behind it. You can even now, based on this, could create something like, like alpha values and have um, transparency in your application that you can kind of look behind it, see what is behind. You can even then use blur if you want. Like you can do a snapshot, blur it, and, and show it again. You can do crazy stuff if you want. Um, but, but mostly it's something like this that you maybe want to have, like rounded corners to, to have a, um, a UI that more or less looks consistent. OK, so it's already one minute over time, right? OK, so um, yeah, I hope you like it. Um, the whole code of this one is, is online. Dirk and I, we have um, a repository. Actually, I don't know if it's at BitHub, Bitbucket, or GitHub. Uh, but Dirk knows it. And uh, since we do not really have slides, but the slides are part of this um, feature toggle tool that we use for the presentation, the repository contains really everything without the trailers. OK, thank you.